Now to make this koi carp bowl you're going to need to have some clear glass painting film. This can be really difficult to get hold of at the moment but if you go over to our website we do have some ideas. So the first thing I did was take my design which you can download off the site and on top of it I put a piece of clear glass painting film. Now I kept on moving it around because I wanted to get as many of these koi carp on as possible and I just used blue tack to hold it down whilst I outlined it. Now I outline these in the normal way, I'm not going to do it now and if you haven't outlined before have a look at one of our outlining videos. Just a word of warning always always check you'll see I put a little tab in this corner I've just stuck a bit of paper on there you want to make sure you know which is the backing sheet and which is the glass painting film because you want to work on it the right way round if you do your whole piece and find you've been working on the backing sheet you are not going to be a happy bunny so I outline lots of fish I think I've done about 20 of them and left them to dry. When they're dry, I put them onto a clear board. Let's just put a bit of paper under there so you can see. Put them on a clear board and taped it down because now I'm going to paint them and this really is the fun part. I've chosen lots of colours. I went on to the internet and saw what sort of colours koi carp come in which is an awful lot of different ones so I've chosen all the relevant colors and I'm just going to put a mixture on each fish now these colors some are transparent some are pebio fantasy prism some are pebio fantasy moon as I say I'm just going to go through them I've already shaken the colors which need it now luckily I'm using my normal solid paintbrush which means I can clean it and flick between colours very quickly. So this one is going to be mostly this orangey peach colour. I better tell you the right name. It's apricot actually. And I'm going to put some black into that as well. You can get very creative with these colours, but as I say, do do have a look on the internet. Oops, gone a bit over there. It's not as crucial in this as it is other glass painting, because remember we are going to cut these out. But still, let's try and make a proper job of it. Now I get my second colour. Uh, I think we'll try this. Onyx, just drop some in there, and finally, now I've finished dipping into all the colours, I'm just going to lift it slightly, which will help me see any gaps, and just move the paint around, cover those gaps. Now obviously, I want to do the two fins, and I'll use roughly the same colours just double check that and there we go okay we'll leave that to dry before I do the eyes but as you can see some really nice effects coming on there with the fantasy moon and fantasy prism giving some very scaly effects for these koi and let me just move that out of the way and show you one I did earlier there we go I hope you can see some really nice color combinations in there right the next thing we're going to do is cut these out so when it comes to cutting these out you've got two choices scissors or craft knife I tend to use a mixture of both. I won't do it all now, but 
take this one. There we go. Get rid of the extra and try and cut as far up to the line as you can. I've even shaved a bit of the outliner off at times and it doesn't matter. The film is clear, so if you do leave the odd little bit, don't fret. In fact, sometimes when I'm doing designs, where there are gaps in the middle of the design, I just leave, leave the film on. Now, one thing I always do try and do, not always possible, is leave a bit on. I do it in a triangular shape, so if I was going to leave it on here, I'd cut a triangular shape with the end on my piece. So that triangular shape there. I bet you can't see that very well, so let me try and... So here's one I did earlier. You still can't see it, but I have... left a little tab on there and that will enable me to start peeling off the backing I just want to start at the moment I don't want to do it completely and if you have trouble starting it put a little bit of tape either side pull that apart and it will start a little bit of tape either side Hopefully pull it apart, and that should start it. Now what I'm going to do is, I said I don't want to do it all at the moment, but I'll get a little bit of paper, let's get a little bit of white paper off here, place that on the film, not on my koi, obviously, I don't want to damage it, even the underneath. Now hopefully I can take the Sellotape back off, he said. A little bit fiddly. Take the sellotape back off. And that should leave my little bit of paper stuck on the film. There we go. So now that'll be ready to peel off quickly when I come to use it. And I've got another one here. I'll put a little bit of paper on that one as well. And again, it'll be ready to come off when I'm going to put them onto my bowl or vase. In this case, onto a bowl. So putting those to the side for a second, here is the bowl, I have given it a wash, um, still a little bit of dust inside there but the outside should be clean, I just washed it down with soapy water to get any grease marks off etc and hopefully since then I've been pretty careful about how I've touched it. Now I did find a mark on it. It's an actual, actually an imperfection in the glass. I don't know whether you can see that or not, but there is a mark there. So when I start, the very first fin is going to go over that mark. Now, in fact, I think I'll do it with the darker one. Now, I've roughly, apart from that one, I've roughly decided how this is going to go. To some extent you need to follow the curvature of the item round as you go. You'll also need a soft cloth to press it down with. Don't press it down with anything too hard. So we'll get the soft cloth. This is a piece of kitchen towel. 
Now I'm going to try and do this so the camera can see it but it could turn out bad. I've got my fish I'm going to start peeling just from this end and I can get that apart yet again I'm just going to take off the very first bit so I would like the fin to be there and the fish is going there and then I'm going to take it off and press it down as it comes off and that way hopefully we'll get no bubbles in it and it just enables the fish to follow the curvature of the bowl round so always from that end If you make a mistake, you should be able to carefully lift it off initially. Very carefully, very slowly. Try not to do it too much. And there's my first fish on. You'll notice I haven't obviously pressed down the tab. Now, very carefully, I'm going to get my craft knife. A bit difficult to do at this angle. So I'm going to have to turn it around a little bit to do it. And there, uh, I've taken the tab off. I hate to think what reflections you can see in there and again I'm just going to make sure it's smoothed down worth taking your time on this so work out which fish are going to go where before you start I'm not going to try and do all that on camera because it'll take ages so let me put on some more fish and I'll come back to you so, as you can see, I did go away and put more fish onto the bowl. But I put a lot more fish onto the bowl. Hopefully you can see that. I'll try and get a decent photograph or two of it outside, maybe. You don't have to put this many on. It was a, a design choice by me. And you don't have to put them onto a bowl. I've got some spares here. I will find somewhere for them to go. We go on any non-porous surface, mirror, vase, tile. There we go. So that's the end of our project. I hope you enjoy it. Happy crafting.